Dr. Ayotunde Koka, the CEO of Open Access Data Centers, joins us for this episode of What's Next. And I'm really excited to be talking to uh, Dr. Koka, who is one of the leading players in the development of the data center industry in Africa. And he's also the chairperson of the influential industry group, the Africa Data Centers Association. So uh, a warm welcome to you, uh, Ayotunde. Thank you for joining us on What's Next. You Joining us from, uh, we, we, you're in uh, Lagos at the moment? Yes, I'm in Lagos right now. Ah, fantastic. Well, for those of you who, for those who may not have heard of open access data centers, could you please explain to us what exactly you do? Okay, um, open access data centers is um, part of the Wired Group, uh, with Wired Groups being uh, around for over 10 years now, uh, building uh, hyperscale uh, um, connectivity infrastructure around Africa. I went into complementing that by setting up open access data centers to build a range of carrier neutral data centers across Africa. So open access data centers is um, now moving at pace, implementing um, in um, South Africa, um, Nigeria, a variety of locations. Also, quite uniquely, um, open access data centers is landing, um, uh, providing landing points for a couple of the uh, key cables uh, being brought into Africa now. One by Google, the Aquino cable, and um, we've landed the Aquino cable in Lagos um, and um, last week in Cape Town and the Meta uh, to Africa cable which um, we are landing in Durban at our facility and uh, also uh, Mogadishu. So we are building at not just many countries but at different levels of scale. Uniquely also the um, sort of core hyperscale data centers of you know tens of megawatts of uh, capacity, one in Lagos being an example of the flagship of that. And um, our capacity in Durban is you know hundreds of uh, racks, the lower levels of megawatts, uh, to the mid-range uh, sort of size of data centers of about you know 200 to 400 racks. Uh, in the metropolis that actually um, demand that kind of scale, not the huge scale mm. fits everywhere. And finally, the edge data centers. The edge data centers are, you know, smaller data centers up to about 50 racks, 150 kilowatts uh, of critical power, taking data uh, uh, to the point of, closer to the point of use, taking away latency, and bringing in uh, infrastructure that allows us to leverage the benefits of 5G as it emerges into the future. Now we have over 20 uh, data centers, edge data centers in South Africa and um, other data centers um, at Durban, as I mentioned, two coming in on stream in Cape Town um, by the year end and also uh, two key locations in Johannesburg. Wow, this is uh, this is super super exciting. Um, you know, I, I I may be giving my age away, but I, I remember when we had the the Sat three cable in South Africa, and I remember being at the landing site of the West Africa cable system uh, many years ago, which connects uh, you know all the way from Nigeria down to the west coast of Africa, and, and then of course all the other undersea cables. And it's extraordinary to think in the last decade. How many undersea cables are landing on our continent? And when I'm mm. hearing you talking about all of these data centers, uh, it's just music to my ears because I'm just looking at economic development. I'm talking, looking at people's lives changing. I'm just looking at this continent that is going to flourish because of these technologies. When you look at your main goals, when it comes to developing uh, a presence in South Africa, what, what would it be? What, what are your main goals in developing this presence in South Africa? Um, it's a market that's served in various ways. Uh, we have some initial established players now. Uh, we think um, there's a market there, um, also um, at um, the, the mid uh, to top range of high quality tier three certified data centers uh, at key locations and unserved locations. Um, which is why we are building um, a couple of uh, facilities in South Africa, locations actually that are complementary 
um, to deliver uh, the capacity uh, to uh, some of the observed markets. Um, so right now, but also at um, high levels of efficiency and value. Um, so, and we have the couple of locations in Johannesburg uh, strategically located to complement existing capacity that's there right now, and also in Cape Town. Uh, so it is it is complementary to uh, other capacity that's available in uh, those locations right now. But more, more critically, we are building the edge data centers and we're expanding them rapidly to um, unreach points of uh, consumption uh, to deliver uh, content to the edge at, at exactly the point of use. Okay, great. Now, now you, you just recently launched your first data center in South Africa. Could you explain to us more about uh, what this Durban facility provides? Um, first of all, it provides um, the landing station for the two Africa cable. It brings capacity in uh, to that uh, and, uh, part of uh, South Africa. We are building out scale at that location as well to meet um, um, demand that we see emerging uh, in Durban and in the areas um, around uh, the, uh, the, the, the landing point, critically bringing in that capacity uh, further into the point of use. We have quite a few edge data centers that complement also our Durban um, and location. And we are, going, we are building out to scale of at least two megawatts uh, at, uh, at the Durban data center. Wow, this is this is exciting stuff. Uh, you, you know, I'm I'm very very impressed with uh, your 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 future uh, thinking and uh, where your strategy is lying. You also said you want to invest five hundred million dollars over the next five years into your African data center network, which is a, a great investment. Uh, you look at Africa, and there's a tremendous amount of investment being made into Africa, whether it be fiber, whether it be uh, the undersea cables you touched on, data centers. Why is this the right location to invest this kind of infrastructure? Okay. Uh, a variety of um, reasons and um, uh, indicators. Some are anecdotal indicators. First of all, um, Africa has about... 15% of world population, 4% of world GDP. So there's a gap there, and I call it the prosperity gap. You know, we've got that to close. And so that's the next wave uh, of consumption, growing consumption in the world, right? We only have 1% of global data center installed capacity. And over 50% of what's installed in, in Africa right now is installed in South Africa. That's one. So there's a lot of demand there. We now have broadband penetration increasing, fiber penetration increasing across Africa, north to south, east to west, taking capacity, lots of undersea capacity coming into Africa, but we have to take it inland. And that's starting to happen yeah. now. That's another key driver. So we're getting broadband penetration into Africa. That's the key thing. You won't get broadband adoption if you don't get broadband penetration. The next thing is to drive the adoption. And you get the adoption when the content's available and the content is efficient and it's driven closer to the point of consumption as we have elsewhere in the world where that growth um, has happened. The other key thing is the arrival of cloud. We have enterprises and enterprise data center, and enterprises can co-locate their data center requirements and so on. But there's, there's a shift to on-prem enterprise um, data centers, which is not where the, the huge <laughs> scale is, pardon me. <clears throat> the huge scale is actually driving consumption of content through cloud. And why is that the huge scale? You see, um, the spending pattern in Africa is predominantly earn today to spend tomorrow. I call it the sachet economy. Things that are procured in little sachets of consumption. So consumers of digital content and technology will consume, uh, will pay today what they're going to consume tomorrow. And that goes for the micro, small, medium enterprises that by and large are the huge consumptive forces across Africa. The only way to do that in technology terms 
is to deliver cloud technology um, that will deliver technology in those small quantities of pay as you need, pay as you go, pay as you grow, both for businesses and for social consumption. So given those gaps that we see in Africa and also the advent of uh, penetration of broadband, we've got to deliver the data center capacity to close that gap between Africa and the world and between South Africa and the rest of Africa. And never mind the rest of our, South Africa is still growing. So we have to deliver yes. that digital infrastructure into Africa. Something unique with the WIRE group is that with OADC, we have um, the carrier neutral data centers but then we couple that with the ability to hook up into one a carrier of carriers in a sister company that allows us to interconnect our data centers across Africa. But being carrier neutral, we can also ensure that the ecosystem of other carriers in our vibrant sort of locations of consumption points or data center delivery points are interconnected mm -hmm. and optimized across all of the technologies that are available and all of the mobile phone technologies that are available. And finally, with the edge data centers that we are putting in place, it hasn't been done before in Africa. We will be driving the efficiency of the consumption of that, uh, the data center availability to host data closer to the point of use uh, across the continent. So you will see us in some countries with, say, a 400 rack data center, because that's what's right for the country and yeah. a distribution of some sort of 30, 40 rack data centers across the board. And then we have operational support frameworks in place. We're really innovating around that, where we use IoT, artificial intelligence, and a distributed support framework that we currently have um, with uh, some of the uh, communications infrastructure that we have right now to support those data centers. Mm. That's where we see the scale coming from. That's where we'll be deploying the capital we're deploying over the next five years. And that's why we, uh, that's why uh, Africa is ready to, to have this uh, level of high quality um, uh, carrier neutral digital infrastructure. Oh, th th this is so exciting for me. You know, when you look at the stats, I was l reading about, you know, the population of Africa of around 1.4 billion people, mm -hmm. the youngest continent in the world. And of course, mm -hmm. when you look at the urbanization that is taking place, and out of those 1.4 billion people or so, only 50% are connected to the internet. Now, the stat I was reading um, mm -hmm. just recently was that in the next three to five years, more than 300 million Africans will experience the internet for the first time. And, you know, this is the services that they're going to experience, the cloud infrastructure, that connectivity, and the economic growth is going to be fantastic to watch. You also recently announced that uh, you have launched uh, 17 uh, half a megawatt edge data centers in South Africa, and you're planning to launch many more before the end of 22. What are the main benefits of these smaller data centers that you're launching? Okay, uh, actually, we've um, gone beyond 17. Um, uh, we're over 20 now. Um, and um, we are making excellent progress uh, with these edge data centers. What they do is uh, they are creating uh, at the point of con uh, use edge points uh, where we uh, have uh, key uh, partners, 5G uh, providers, ISPs, creating a local interconnect uh, points, interconnect ecosystems, delivering content at the point of use at the edge. It drives an adoption as well, because it's not just getting uh, uh, connectivity to the edge, it's also delivering the, that uh, efficiently uh, at the point of use. Uh, we are continuing to build uh, key edge data centers there. So it's not just the uh, key interconnect pairing points that we have at the very large core data centers. These are disaggregated to the point of use to the edge data centers. And we, we are growing um, to uh, so 25 uh, trajectory towards 30 um, edge data centers in South Africa. And we will deliver that also into uh, Nigeria.
Oh, okay, well, that's interesting. That's very interesting. And, and I guess it, it's all about the engineering and how you engineer uh, the entire network, right? So those uh, smaller data centers take uh, a lot of pressure off the bigger data centers. Now, alongside these half a megawatt data centers, you're also planning several two to three megawatt tier three quality regional facilities that are bigger that are also due to come online at Q3 2022. Uh, talk to us about the benefits of these facilities compared to the smaller uh, half a megawatt data centers. Yeah, we have the quarter edge architecture and some of these uh, MIDI sort of data centers, uh, which are two 400 rack, uh, so it's, you know, 200 um, uh, scalable. Uh, to, to, to 400 and to it's about 700 rack uh, data centers, they bring the right level of scale to the right point of use. So we have a, a, um, mm. a distributed architecture of these sort of large core data centers, carry neutral, great point of interconnect and pairing, right through the MIDI data centers that are better suited to certain uh, uh, locations, uh, delivering the right scale that's efficient for, for, that is required at that point, and down to these edge data centers that I've talked about. So it's a, it's, 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 it's a tiered architecture that we find as efficient in delivering capacity across the continent uh, in the right locations. Okay, fantastic. And, 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 and I guess you've got lots of partnerships. Uh, talk to us about the progress that uh, OADC has made since its inception um, in onboarding 5G operators, you know, ISPs and fiber providers to reach new markets and grow their businesses. We have a great uh, partnership and program ongoing with RAIN uh, right now, and that's driving the, um, the uh, um, execution at edge uh, with, the, with the anchor clients we have. And then, of course, at that point uh, at the edge, we bring together uh, the ISP community who now have a great interconnect point at, uh, at the point where they're delivering the services. And we've made significant progress with this in South Africa right now. And we also have emerging partnerships for us to do the same thing in Nigeria, not just about the key large data center we have uh, at, at the landing point of Equiano in Lagos, uh, which will grow out to up to um, 20 megawatts uh, of, of power but other MIDI and uh, edge data centers at key interconnect points and consumption points across the country. And in other smaller countries in sub-Saharan Africa, you will see this architecture emerge, particularly at sort of the MIDI level and the edge level. Fantastic. And finally, uh, Dr. Coco, where, where, where can uh, viewers get more information about the work that Open Access Data Centers is doing and the growth and, and the data centers that you're rolling out? What's your website and how do people get details? Openaccessdc.net. Uh, all of this information will be uh, implemented on the website uh, as, as we progress. Okay, that's easy enough. Openaccessdc.net. Uh, Dr. Ayatonde Koka, who is the CEO of Open Access Data Centers, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of What's Next, all the way from Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Aki. All the best.